And this is Cash Color Cannabis, a high level of conversation. We're coming to you live from Atlanta. This is your host, Mecca King. And I'm blessed, actually. You know, we're, we're, we're taking a little bit of a recess. We don't go back live until January 7th. But I have a chance to actually speak to a, a super legend in this cannabis industry. And I couldn't turn up the chance to have a conversation with her. So without further ado, Amber Senta. Anthony, how are you doing tonight? Hey, what's up? Thank you for having me, Mecca. I'm good. How are you? Man, look, I'm blessed, man. You know, I, we, we've been friends through social media and actually had a chance to meet you in real life before. And, um, you know, I'm just always amazed about your journey as far as through cannabis and just being a business person overall and surviving a lot of things. Um, so for those who don't know, just briefly explain to, to them who Amber Center is. Yeah, so uh, hmm, let's see. Uh, <laughs> entrepreneur, right? Uh, I have a manufacturing and distribution company uh, where we make... Uh, infused cannabis products in Oakland. Um, also opening up a couple of dispensaries in San Francisco. Mm. And um, I'm also executive director and co-founder of Supernova Women, where we, um, we're a group of women that works to, well, women of color, that works to empower people of color to become uh, business owners in cannabis. Okay. You know what? And, and lofty goals, man. You've accomplished a lot of lofty goals, especially inside the cannabis industry in, in, in California. You know, briefly, we were just talking about legalization and, and, how, and everything that is going on in California. Um, from your perspective, especially working with Supernova Women and being a, a, a business owner, how do you feel about legalization coming to California? Like, do you feel like it's been a benefit so far? I mean, you know, so I sit back and I think a lot about, like, you know, should I have voted for legalization? Uh, you know, Prop 64, all of that. And uh, there was no, I, I voted for Prop 64. And the reason why I did was because, you know, I, I mean, I, I fight so people don't go to jail yeah. for weed and, and have an equal opportunity uh, in the space. So there was no way that I could not uh, vote in favor of it. Yeah. But I mean, the execution is, is been, has been terrible. You know, um, it, it's taxed so high that regular folks can't afford weed. So they're, <laughs> they're forced to buy unregulated weed, you know, and uh, they're both forced to buy it on a traditional market where it's not tested. And uh, and that's a problem. So, um, you know, lots of problems in the execution of legalization. Yeah, for sure. The argument over Prop 64 was heavy, especially on social media. You know, you heard a lot of people who called themselves, I guess, uh, um, cannabis real people for cannabis culture in california and they were anti-prop 64 yeah. but i kind of felt you it was almost like you were caught between a rock and a hard place yeah you don't want to see people go to jail you do want to see some kind of legalization pass it's just but it's this right. you know what I mean? yeah 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 and you know i knew it would be messed up and it's everything that we hoped it would not be but at the end of the day you could be walking down the street with you know, an eighth in your pocket and you're not going to go to jail for yeah. weed, you're not going to get a ticket, none of these things. And that was the goal. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, the goal was set there. You know, we still have, there's still hoops and ladders to be, be climbed when it comes to the business side of things. Um, from your perspective, how do you feel like the business side, the, when it comes to legalization, the business side could um, could be changed or could, or could be better? Like, what do you see the different measures that could be made that could help a person like you um, be a little bit more successful? Definitely lower the taxes. <laughs> okay. You know, the taxes yeah. are the number one problem. Cost of compliance is number two. Yeah. So um, we got to jump through all kinds of hoops uh, to get a compliant product on the shelves, uh, not just from the, the growing of it and all that. You know, it's, it's got to be grown uh, in a, um, a safe manner, which is, which is obviously good. But uh, the growers, they incur a lot of costs for all the hoops that they have to jump through. And then they have to give it to a third party essentially a distributor which is a, a role that I play um, and we are the compliance uh, piece of the supply chain so we're we're in charge of the testing and uh, and making sure it's packaged properly all and labeled properly and, um, and you know the testing's not cheap and then um, and then we got to get it on the shelves at the retailers and there's a cost incurred there because it's got to go in a compliant vehicle <laughs> from one facility to the other facility. And then I haven't even started talking about the facilities and the compliance that's required for those. We gotta have lots of uh, security, uh, security cameras, 
the uh, industry just, around cannabis is so amazing to me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? From the vehicles to the surveillance, yeah. like there's all these other industries. There's around a lot it. of money yeah. that could be made selling the, the, the shovels and the picks yeah, to yes. to the people that are mining, which is me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> From insurance to uh, to uh, garage door sales, you know? Like seriously, um, lots of folks use garage doors for security to cover up whether it be a retail storefront or even um, like inside your facility, keeping the uh, your product safe in a vault that you made. Like it's it's really crazy that uh, all the folks around cannabis that can make a ton of money. Yeah, yeah. Well, so far so good. You know, what I'm saying you're, you're yes. surviving in this industry yes. and, and you're one of the newbies, man. You're definitely I mean, well, you're not a newbie, but you're one of the people who's going to make a lane for another for another group of people. Yeah. Um, what kind of advice would you give to somebody who's trying to get into the industry, whether it be from a dispenser, from a um, distributor level, or any kind of level, especially touching flower? Um, what are some of the hoops and ladders you would say they would have to jump through? How would you help them try to navigate those? Yeah, I would say um, there's a couple of things, right? First, you got to have a lot of grit. This is not an industry for the weak. You're gonna get punched <laughs> in the face. You're gonna get punched in the yeah. stomach. It's gonna be hard. It's not gonna be fun. Yeah, sometimes it's gonna be by dorks, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And don't think you're gonna get into this and make a million dollars. Well, you, you'll probably make a million dollars, but don't think you're gonna get into this and get rich because of that million. Maybe you get to keep ten percent. <laughs> you know. So um, uh, don't think you're gonna get rich quick, um, but have a lot of grit. You know eyes on the prize, and really um, don't come in here trying to do everything. Start low and slow, you know? Uh, start with very few employees. Run lean and mean, you know? Um, that's uh, all these folks now that we see crashing and burning in flames, all these big companies that are going down left and right, it's because they started out with, you know, a crazy C-suite, you know, got 10 people in the C-suite with over 200K salaries, then they're paying all these consultants, and then they got a ridiculous staff. Like, start real lean, yeah. start real, real lean, yeah. and uh, start start small and just work your way up. Get your foot in the door, you know? Like, these, these licenses are expensive. There's no reason to start out with three, four, five licenses when you can just start with one and make some money and then just, just, just continue to build from there. Yeah. Everything you spoke about so far basically added up to money. And I know that's one thing that's a big hindrance when it comes to seeing more people of color get involved in the industry. Um, another part is just a lack of interest. You know, if social equity was supposed to help at least on that side. Um, when it comes to funding and making sure that people have at least an interest in making sure that they keep a diverse staff. Right now it seems like that's another one of those plans that's, that's, that's still a work in progress. Yeah. Um, what's your opinion so far about social equity that you see it kind of going from California and other places, um, just the whole notion of it and the, impl impl the implement of it so far? Yeah, you know, so the social equity program started in Oakland. Um, Supernova Women worked with the city of Oakland to actually uh, create and implement the first social equity program in the country. And um, the, some of the parameters and qualifications that we picked, we did that because we couldn't do it specifically on race. We knew for a fact, because the numbers are there, that black and brown people have been disproportionately affected by the war on drugs, and we needed to do things that would attempt to correct what had happened. And uh, we couldn't say black and brown people, all of them get will qualify for the program, even though Ideally, that's how it should have gone. Yeah. So uh, we came up with these parameters, and I feel like um, what we came up with didn't necessarily encompass all of the folks that should qualify. It didn't help enough people. And so now what has happened is people are taking what Oakland has done and doing a slight interpretation on it, but I don't feel like it goes far enough, and it's also not going back to that core issue of black and brown people were disproportionately affected by the war on drugs and we need to do what we can to fix that. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think, uh, give, you know, essentially what Oakland's program does is it gives an opportunity for, for people from certain police beats um, that were over-policed or folks that have a cannabis conviction coming out of Oakland it gives them an opportunity to participate in the regulated cannabis industry by offering them a license at no cost uh, at the city level and also an incubate and uh, they can be incubated 
by uh, someone else who doesn't qualify for equity, like myself. And um, I feel like equity, so uh, the, the drug war spans far beyond just an opportunity to work in cannabis, you know what I mean? Like, people that went to jail over a bag of weed, like their whole lives were destroyed, their families were broken, uh, their houses were taken away, all their stuff was taken away, you know? And we're not addressing those parts of the problem. Not just that, but you know, if you if you were traumatized by selling weed, why would you want to go out and sell more weed? Yeah. You know, so like, there, there's a lot of things that can be fixed. You know, we need to, we need to we need to offer people uh, uh, housing, special low interest housing loans. You know what I mean? Like people's houses were taken away. How mm. how can we give them back the house yeah. that they lost? And there's a lot that can be done in the and then you get into complicated matters because you talk about having to restore a lot of things and then you start jumping into other people's pockets yeah. and, and that's where it becomes a real tricky situation and I thought it was funny that you even touched on the fact about people not wanting to sell weed you know what I mean like I'm talking to my cousin and I want to put your whole record out there me and him was talking recently he was like man look I've been I got, I'm a 20 year fella what I look like going back to selling weed right. you know what I'm saying yeah. but I would love to do something else and I always thought about that, like, you know, yeah, you got a point. Like, why would you want to jump back into that? There should be opportunities for you, though, to still be restored something that you lost. Absolutely. Yeah. What if you want to start a barbershop? What if you want to start a restaurant? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, like, it's, it's just ridiculous to pigeonhole folks and tell them, oh, well, this is just for a cannabis business. Like, come on now. Yeah, and then, then it's, it's very easy to manipulate, I feel. Because off rip, it's hard for you to say with a straight face, I have to hire, I have to have this color person or this type of person in my business. It's really hard for somebody to do that. But it's easy for you to pick one person. You know, and I feel like I see a lot of that. Like, you, you'll, you'll cherry pick sometimes. And these will be the people who will represent what you call social equity. And ignore the fact there's a whole lot of other people in this room not being even spoken about. You know, and I feel like we run that course as well with, with, with the conversation. But this, that, that's but it's all new. You know, all this is still something that's in works. And I feel like over the next two, three, four, five years, people like my nephew who's 20, by the time you're 25, you're going to see a way different face that, of cannabis than I saw right now when it's coming to, when it's come, even with this coming to life right now. Yeah, I hope so, you know, especially with, uh, like I mentioned, all these big companies crashing and burning. I hope that's making an opportunity and a way for uh, some more folks more folks that were uh, will run profitable, um, sustainable businesses yeah. a, a chance. Yeah, you know, and speaking about some of the bigger companies um, go, going down, such as Mad Men, um, speak about that, you know, because for a little while, me being on the, on the media side, I get press releases all day, and I got annoyed of seeing just press releases of people spending money. Like for like, for like six straight months, it was just who was spending money, and almost every other time it was Mad Men. So it's crazy that you're seeing them kind of going through the, the issues they're going through, but they're not alone. Um, speak to us about how some of these big money people and, and big businesses are coming through, and how they started wrong, and why that's going, why they're in the situation. Well, they kind of came in um, on some real inflated, uh, projections like okay we're gonna make we're gonna open all these stores we're gonna make all this money uh, not taking into account uh, the taxes yeah. and the cost of regulation and uh, that people just wouldn't be down with spending all that money on weed yeah you know so they didn't take any of that into account and now you know their numbers are not matching up with their projections and the investors it's been three years for a lot of these folks now and a lot of these um, uh, uh, convertible notes and things that they issued are coming due <laughs> and the investors are like all right where's our money and they're like oh well we don't we're not profitable yet the investors are like no we're taking over your business yeah. <laughs> so that's happening uh you know <laughs> left and right now companies running out of cash going bankrupt trying to sell their licenses recoup whatever they can and there's not a lot of people that are trying to jump after those licenses because like i mentioned folks that are staying in the game and that are smart are running lean and mean and they're like, I don't need that. Yeah, yeah I don't need that. I'm not paying that. We're, we, we're good over here. And so um, we're going to see a mass cannabis exodus in 2020. You know, one other thing I felt like they made wrong, like a lot of these bigger companies are doing wrong is you're coming in as a big company. Like there's no real interaction with local anything, you mm -hmm. know? So that's a that's the easy way to fall. You know, like yeah. why would I buy designer brand when there's people locally here who I can support. Absolutely. And I feel like they make, I watch companies make that mistake all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it actually uh, happened in Oakland. I'm going to put this company on blast. Um, so 
have a heart opened uh, down the street um, on Broadway, which is Main Drag in Oakland. Cookies opened about mm, two and a half months after they did. Um, when Have a Heart opened, you know they're a chain out of Seattle. They don't. They're not from Oakland. They don't know nothing about Oakland. Whatever, right? They tried to paint a big mural on the side of their building at an Oakland mural. I'm like, nah, come on now. But then you got a brand like Cookies that is Oakland. Yes, yes. Very born and bred in the Bay with Burner from Santa Cruz, and everybody loves Cookies. When Cookies opened, I went to the grand opening. There was a line around the block the whole day. You know, and they're selling seventy-four dollar eggs all day, <laughs> and it was just epic. The amount of people that came out and supported. So at the end of the day, you know, the true brands with real heart and cannabis behind them, they're going to separate themselves from these companies that come in as big companies, just like we got all this money, you know, buy our weed. Yeah. You know, they, they, we'll, we'll see the difference and. And the customer knows the difference. I feel like cannabis is one of the rare spaces where celebrity can't really rule. And I think yeah. that people are going to realize that very shortly. Like, I think they already have been Yeah, like, it, right? like, like it's, it's one of the things where really it's a lot more about grassroots who was on the ground mm -hmm. versus, hey, Jay-Z got a line or you just gave Nas his own line of dads. I've never seen Nas dab a day in my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> right. like, why, why would I buy that just because I like his albums? You know what I mean? Right. Like, that's not a space that I feel like cannabis is where versus like clothes, fashion or something like that. You could throw a, a celebrity in, 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 in out of nowhere and your line is out the blue. You know what I'm saying? Your line is out the part not cannabis you know and I think that's great that we're seeing that part happening right now yeah I, I really um, I like that you know because every time you turn around you see some celebrity like oh this person gonna start they online versus partnering up with somebody exactly. to to elevate a brand together they this celebrity gonna try and do it on their own and I have not seen one successful celebrity cannabis brand yet the only person that I have faith in who's gonna end up coming out and doing it right my opinion. Yeah. Rihanna. Really? Yeah. Um, she's a weed smoker. Really, man. <laughs> you know what? That's one weed I would I would be almost nervous to smoke. Like if really? Rihanna said I got some weed out, I'm like, I don't know, man. Like I you you do things to people. <laughs> <laughs> you do things to people. Whoever you got in the lab with and created this guy is definitely tailor made for you. You know what I mean? Let me know my tolerance level first before I hit this. Yeah. I think Wiz would be Wiz is gonna be great. You know, Khalifa Kush is good and I think that Wiz is one of those people who um you just kind of get. I think Smoke Dizza could too. Just we just name running off names. I think Dizza could too, but not many, not many. I think Snoop could. To be honest with you, I think Snoop has been so tied into weed right now that he came out with a weed line. I mean, he has a weed line, but it will come off just like him having a cookbook. It's like another thing Snoop got. And that's that's kind of what this happening. Yeah, yeah. It's like another thing Snoop got. Like you know, I don't care. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I've been watching you smoke for forever. Like, I always shout out you in Red Man. I learned how to roll a blunt listening to Red Man's How to Roll a Blunt. Freshman year of high school. <laughs> I, I, I've been hearing this for now almost four decades, man. Like, I get it. You smoke weed. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, what is, you know, we're coming into a new year. You know, 2020 is actually in, the, in hours now, actually hours. <laughs> mm -hmm. Are you ready? I, I feel ready. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm ready. I'm ready. Like, 2019 really beat me up you know I got but but then I also like had a lot of really good wins it was just it was a crazy year it was very some real high highs and some real low lows but um, I imagine that with the bigger the projects that I take on and the more responsibility I get that that's just how it's gonna be so I'm just gonna rock with it yeah what do you feel what is the um the best life, the best lesson you learn going through this whole process of being a business, a business owner. You know, like what is something that you think that it has has really helped you mature that you have learned? Um, I've learned how to be very flexible, mm. and I don't take no for an answer. Mm. You know, so um, uh, yeah, I I, I got to roll with the punches. That's just how it goes. You know, stuff is not always going to go your way the road to success is not a straight shot it's very very windy yeah and um yeah and then also i don't i don't take no for an answer you know so someone tells me no i'm gonna try and figure out a way to make it work for the both of us and if it is no 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 i'm gonna figure out another way <laughs> <laughs> you know do you still get high 
Like, and I, and I say that meaning, you know, when people smoke on a regular, regular basis and it's part of your life and your job, mm -hmm. do you still see yourself getting high like, say, um, a normal person? Or not normal person, but just a person who thinks they smoke smoke? Um, yes. I, <laughs> I, I dab a lot, so, yeah. Oh, so you can yeah. <laughs> I, get, I get blasted off the dabs, that's for sure. Um, some weed, yeah, some weed gets me high, but a lot of weed doesn't. That's what's so, up. Yeah, I do... Uh, I, I find myself having to like infuse my joints with uh, <laughs> with uh, uh, rosin or, or or something to kind of pump it up a bit, Man. or I just do dabs. Let me tell you, dabs. I, I'm not a dab person. I don't think yeah. one. I, I don't think my lungs are good enough. Like whenever I try to inhale, people just keep telling, keep going. And I'm like, I, I'm far as enough. You know, <laughs> like, like you know, I pass out right now for the weed hit me or what? Like, but I don't feel like I'm a dab person yet. Like, what am I doing wrong? You think? I, I mean, I don't know. We'll find out. Amber, <laughs> <laughs> you hilarious, man. So, um, if there was any words of encouragement you can give to people as far as um, being a business owner and just and, and being somebody who could persevere, what would they be? Mm, I mean, grit. You know, yeah, that's yeah. that's definitely like the number one thing. You know, like I, I mentioned. Um, I don't take no for an answer. You can't really take no for an answer. You, you gotta exhaust all options before moving forward with whatever decision it is you decide to make. And um, um, yeah, really grit is like the number one thing. I think that's like probably the most important thing for an entrepreneur is uh, is grit and, and learning how to be flexible. That's what's up. So, so far we learned tonight that uh, Rihanna's probably going to have the best weed as a celebrity. <laughs> I want some Rihanna weed. <laughs> Don't get offended if she doesn't get high off your joint. <laughs> yeah. And it takes a lot to be a business owner. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, um, before we get out of here, let people know how they can find you online or how they can connect with you and learn any more about Amber Sensor. Yeah, sure. You can, uh, well, definitely follow Supernova Women on Instagram. Uh, also on Facebook, search Supernova Women. Uh, we put on a lot of events uh, throughout the year. We're actually doing one on January 16th in Oakland. Um, we're doing a tax workshop. So Oakland just lowered the taxes, and we're going to be telling folks how <laughs> that <you>. yes, <laughs> how that affects you, and uh, if you run a cannabis business, how it affects your cannabis business. And um, to find me personally, uh, you can find me on Instagram at it's me amber e and my website is ambreezy.com your website would be ambreezy yeah. <laughs> amber yeah. i had a blast with you tonight man thank you for stopping by urban city market and chopping up with me tonight yeah thank you mecca thank you for having me no problem that's cash color cannabis a high level of conversation